Seeing Nymphalis Antiopa for the first time is an unforgettable experience. Around the end of June, the newly hatched butterflies take flight and travel long distances. The butterflies quench their thirst and feed on mineral salts before leaving. From time to time they rest in sunny places and so re-energize. On their journey, the butterflies pass by villages, visiting parks and gardens. As well as mineral salts, the butterflies are attracted to over-ripened fruit, like these windfall mulberries. Once they have had their fill, they fly in search of somewhere out of sight, where they spend most of the summer, thus avoiding the worst of the heat typical of our region. At the start of autumn, several individuals come out of hiding, then leave in search of somewhere to hibernate, like here in this old derelict shed. Nymphalis antiopa is also known as the Camberwell beauty. Here, caught deep in hibernation. At the beginning of spring, towards mid-March, the butterflies are awakened by the rising temperature and leave their hiding place. Then clean their antennae and gather strength by warming up on a sunny rock. Although this butterfly species rarely drinks from flowers, it cannot resist the nectar from viburnum. We noticed that the bright yellow bands of colour on the upper wings fade during hibernation. Around early afternoon, the males go in search of a suitable territory in a clearing. or along a watercourse. The golden oriole and the bee-eater also frequent such places and mostly feed on flying insects. The undigested parts are ingested in the form of small balls. This Camberwell beauty is in luck and drinks freely on willow catkins. An ideal territory is made up of a clearing bordered by one or more large trees where the males keep a meticulous lookout for passing females. Males also perch high up in the trees.
Around about two o'clock, this male is patrolling his territory and also chasing away other butterfly. As soon as a female comes into the clearing, the male goes to meet her, then the two butterflies land on a tree trunk at the edge of his territory. But the female does not appear to be ready. A little way off, in the forest, a perching male has more success and manages to mate. From the end of April to mid-May, the females look for willows growing in a location alternating between wet and dry on which to lay their eggs. They choose places low down as well as spots high up in the willows. At the end of the morning, the female will carefully lay around 250 eggs in the form of a cylinder, similar to a corn on the cob. Another female lays her eggs higher up on the branches. The freshwater turtle lives in this humid zone. The Camberwell beauty is attracted to the sap seeping from lesions in the trees, as we see here on this willow where they drink for hours. Not only the Camberwell beauty enjoys this feast, a comma joined by a chafer and a hornet cannot resist the juice from the lesions. As well as the false grayling and a purple emperor. Once they are satisfied, the butterflies relax in the sun, their wings wide open.
After four days, the eggs ripen and have changed colour. A fortnight later, the eggs turn black and you can see the heads of the caterpillars through the transparent layer, eating an opening out of the shell. After about two weeks, when the eggs have hatched, we can find the remains of the white eggs cylindrically laid on a stem, as we see here on a small willow. But not all the eggs will fully mature. Here, a very small wasp, barely two millimetres in size, Telenomus from the Celionidae family, infects the Camberwell beauty eggs, one by one. This parasitoid parasitizes almost all the eggs which are already an orangey colour. With the naked eye, it's not easy to distinguish between the eggs infected by this parasitoid from those which are ready to hatch, because the parasitized eggs turn the same black colour. The parasitized eggs hatch long after the caterpillars. Once the wasps have hatched, the remains of the empty shells stay black in colour. It is therefore possible to distinguish between the white rings typical of the Camberwell beauty and the black ones of the parasitoids. The small, newly hatched caterpillars, barely three millimetres long, go looking right away for young leaves, leaving a trail of silk thread behind them. After the first molt, the small caterpillars regroup in the form of a black ball at the end of a stem, held together with silk and thread. Branches stripped of leaves are a giveaway for the whereabouts of the caterpillars. But we also find some caterpillar nests snacking on the leaves high up in the trees. After the second molt, the caterpillar's feet are red and they have red markings on their backs, which are edged with little black spikes. By the fourth day, the caterpillars are ready to molt for the third time. After the hardening of their new skin, the spikes are more accentuated. The hungry caterpillars go looking for food higher up in the branches. Six days later, the caterpillars begin their final molt. Right after the molt, the new spikes, pale yellow in colour, protrude from the body and as they dry out, they become black standing out from the body.
The mature caterpillars leave the trees and search for a suitable place in which to change into chrysalises. Sometimes they travel long distances to find the ideal spot. Such a place must be concealed, dry and shaded from the sun. First of all, they spin a little cushion. To which they attach their back feet. From which they will suspend themselves. The next day, metamorphosis begins. The film is speeded up. After several hours, the chrysalis will be fully developed and will have acquired its final shape. Two weeks later, the outer skin of the chrysalis becomes transparent and the butterfly emerges. stretches its wings and dries them. Despite the dangers that may threaten, this butterfly begins its new life. <laughs>